Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, Tony, there's something that every solo entrepreneur needs to hear. If you're running your own show, you know how important branding and client management are. And speaking of making things easier for solopreneurs, let's talk about Schedulicity. It's designed to personalize your client interactions from start to finish. Schedulicity has some cool new features coming. You'll soon be able to customize your booking page, add your own logos, choose your colors, and really make it sing to your brand's personality. It's like giving your business a digital front door that looks and feels like you. Schedulicity isn't just about looking good. Schedulicity is designed to make everything smoother from booking to billing. You know, it's not just about the looks, it's about efficiency too. They've integrated something pretty slick, intake forms. Now clients can fill out all the details before they even step foot into the door. What's cool is these forms attach to the client's profile and update automatically for future appointments. Talk about saving time and starting on schedule. It's your schedule and your success all rolled into one. With all these tools from Schedulicity, you're not just running your business, you're growing it. And for all the solopreneurs and sweet owners out there, this is exactly the kind of support we need to stand out in a crowded market. Hey, hey, welcome to your day off. My name is Corey, and of course, I'm sitting with my best friend. Tony, what's up, buddy? What's going on, man? Nothing. Big shout out to uh, to uh, uh, ABS and to Schedulicity for uh, for bringing us in this weekend. Um, Schedulicity is sponsoring our podcast for the weekend, so all the uh, all the content that we collect this weekend will uh, uh, Schedulicity is uh, sponsoring that. Yeah, it's powered by Schedulicity, and it couldn't be powered by a better company. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, they are without a doubt. A hairdresser forward and, and you know their funnel is hairdresser so like everything that they how they've set their entire company up is to is to just make our life a little bit better they were like uh, they were like ai before ai they're just trying <laughs> to like make our make our job a little bit easier yeah and and you know and it starts from the top and anybody who knows jerry natuno and knows how much uh he uh he loves our industry and how much he's really i mean from from the from the very beginning of since we've known him, mm-hmm. uh, how much he's really put uh, put a lot of effort into taking care of our industry. I think what a lot of people don't know about Jerry is that you know they kind of see him as the executive or the CEO of Schedulicity, but um, he's a musician and he's a creative, and like and he has a special place in his heart for creatives, which you know kind of defines. A, and with that with that same heart, um, he uh, he's trying to make the creative's job a little easier because he understands the, the the struggle. Yeah, and and I mean. Just just try it, and you'll understand what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, completely. So when it's time for you to spend your money on a scheduling app, definitely look towards Schedulicity because they will take care of you. Yep. Yep. Um, also, big shout-out to Mr. Frank Folco and our friend Kate Gallagher um, at ABS. We're in Chicago this weekend. We're throwing down the stuff, and um, we're just uh, really happy to be at ABS. This show is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, our first our first time at the show was was during the um those years we don't talk about anymore but the ones that happened a few years ago and just to watch how this thing has grown we were walking around the floor yesterday and it's so big and there's so many brands here and the makeup shows here like it's a little disorienting i didn't really know where i like like when you go to premier orlando it's a big square so you kind of always know where you are in the room here like i was like i don't i'm not even sure how to get back to our room yeah it, it, it you get lost easily to get lost because it's so big and, and you know and they're continuing to grow uh i was talking to our guest uh earlier how much she loved it uh but it's it's, it's an amazing event uh thrown by again amazing people because frank uh you know we've we've done a podcast with him in the past and uh it, you can see how much he really appreciates and loves uh the industry as well that's right so once again make it to abs if you're uh, if you, you make it to chicago in april so we can get to abs but what we really like to do when we do a live podcast or podcast you know at, at conventions we get to talk to new friends old friends and all that kind of stuff so we actually uh we have an old friend not old i mean she's young and beautiful and all that stuff but but um uh, mm. but it's someone that we've had on the podcast a few times and um i i do we just love to like Sit down and chat it up, because you know, like you know, like when you when you think of the old phrase, you know, jack of all uh, trades, master of right? none. Well, <laughs> this one, our friend here is not only a jack of all trades, but she's a master of some. 
And she is a master of some. Should we get in? Yeah. So today our guest is Danielle Kiesling, and um, I'm going to embarrass her because we, <laughs> we were in New York the other week. She goes, boys, I've got something to tell you, but you're not allowed to tell anyone. So <laughs> that's the last thing you do to a podcaster. However, um, I think that it's public now, and that's what we're here to talk about. So it's so amazing to me that Danielle is uh, both associated with Ulta, and she's associated with, with Dyson now. And what's amazing with both of those companies is that they were consumer to pro instead of pro to consumer. And, and I find that fascinating. I find both the trajectories amazing. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is, is the Dyson Pro team and how that came about. And we, we've talked about it, how, how in the beginning where... Uh, you know, the, 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 those companies that went from consumer to pro, how there was a resistance getting into the industry, right? Because there was like, we don't trust you. We don't right. think you have, a, you know, but both companies have done a great job of putting the industry, the hairdresser, uh, you know, and taking care of them. Yeah, being able to elevate them. I mean, I think that just kind of shows like amazing leadership with both of those companies because I can't imagine, I can't imagine even like having that approach to it, but we'll get in. She, she's, she's the sort of expert on this, so we'll bring her in. Yeah. Cool. Miss Danielle Kiesling, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank Well, thank you for telling us the juice about like uh, <laughs> Dyson Pro. I know. It was so exciting. I had to tell somebody. <laughs> <laughs> we may have been in a bar. I'm just going to throw that out. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and I was there presenting an award on behalf of Dyson. So it That's did right. It did raise a couple, you know, questions. I saw some eyebrows go up in the crowd and, you know, it wasn't officially announced yet. Everyone's like, what is, what is What's she? What's Dyson Pro? Yeah, why? Why? <laughs> Why is Danielle presenting for Dyson? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, originally when I saw it, I just, and I didn't know whether like Dyson and Ulta had a relationship. So kind of, kind of my thought, my initial thought was like, oh, is Dyson like with Ulta now yeah. or, or what that deal was? Yeah, for it is like, who's sleeping with who? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's always the question on show weekends. <laughs> how, did, how, did that, how did that pro team come about? How did they, how did you get in contact or they get in contact with you to create this, this pro team? Well, um, Shallon, who uh, heads up education and is actually now over marketing, um, her and I have just had a really great relationship in the industry, and it's through it was actually through passings of uh, events at Ulta. And, you know, she just really, because of the consumer approach that Dyson used, um, I think sh the relationship with Ulta was very strong, and so they would they really did a lot to benefit and educate and help support Ulta events, everything from FLC to um, some of our smaller trainings, um, trainings like that we have for the top stylists that make over 100K. So I just developed a rapport with Shallon, and I think she's really worked hard as a hairstylist and been with Dyson for a, a, a good enough time where she really saw that they needed to have, they needed to fill that void. They needed to have professional representation, especially um, as they started talking about developing new tools for, to keep supporting the professional. So um, just having a really good relationship with her and then also knowing and having formerly worked with Pekila Riley, um, I get along with Pekila really well. We work really well together and she's been with Dyson as an ambassador and uh a user for a, a quite some time as well. So um, just having those two connections and then all of a sudden it was like they, she got the go ahead with Dyson to create a pro team and it just kind of seamlessly started kind of rolling out from there. You know what, I think you bring up a really good point and that's like anybody can have relationships. Yeah. Right? Whether, it, first off, we've, we've talked about this as well, is our entire industry is about relationships. Yeah. You know, whether you're behind the chair, your relationship with your boss, with your assistant, with the people that stand, you know, stand next to you in a chair and yeah. relationships with your clients, you know, last but not least, or, or maybe first, but, you know, most important, your relationships with your clients and, and how important all those relationships are. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I th there's no way that, that you were going to have any, like, transaction with Dyson because they never had a pro team. Yeah. But then when it was time, they were like, oh, who are our friends in this space? And go, oh, Danielle Kiesling's the first person that I think of. Yeah. Maybe second or third. You know, Maybe. we don't know. Don't but, know. but you know, you got I the don't job. Know either. <laughs> <laughs> you got they the knew job. who was going to be on it before they told, <laughs> like, came to me to say, hey, can you be like the face with Tequila? So, um, yeah. And, and it is. It is all about relationships because, to be honest with you, I, you guys know. I mean, like, I am with Alta. I am with 
the face of biolage matrix colorist um and then great links and yeah you know to me i'm like i i was not surprised well i was a little surprised i was like dang a company is coming after me knowing that like i work with all of these other brands um you know to me it's like does she have time to do you know, you, does she have time to do this? But it's 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 just nice to be, have been approached. And, you know, yes, I do have time. You know, I'm not working behind the chair anymore. I'm doing all education for everybody. But it, it also fits into the other companies and who I'm aligned with. So Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be, fir- be my first question to myself. Do I have time? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to put my face on another product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I definitely do. And it aligns with not just Ulta, but, you know, we're talking about consumer to pro. And, you know, Great Links takes that approach as well. So, you wow, know. that's crazy, right? Yeah, for being an extension company, you know. And, like that, and this like, is just all accidental, right? Like, yeah. you're, you're with all these, like, consumer to pro products as opposed to pro to consumer. Yeah. That's bizarre, right? It, it is kind of bizarre. It didn't. It's, I still, like, know so much of the other side of it, so I kind of, you know, like, don't even think about it like that, but, mm-hmm. you know, if you, if you look at, like, any advertising that we do for Great Lengths, we, ne- we do not advertise to the professional. We, we are completely, all of our campaigns, everything we do is totally geared and thought through and directed to a consumer, so... Um, you know, we're hoping to spread the spread the world or the word about luxury hair to consumers. So then they go and force force they go in and you know like get their stylists excited and they they want them to get certified in it. So that's like really like it's such a backwards approach, but it works <laughs> for us. That's amazing. Yeah. Do, are, do you guys plan on 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 Dyson's side? Do you plan on bringing in more pros and like ambassadors and stuff, or or like because with Ulta like. You know, you see the six faces that are on, on all the posters. Is that kind of Dyson's approach, or are they going to look for more, like, ambassadorships and stuff? I don't think that they've gotten that far. Um, you know, like, I think that right now it's just such a new thing, and it, it'll be fun. I mean, like, this is, like, the start of something that's never existed. Dyson's never had a professional team. So, you know, this is, like, total new territory. How do we – where where do we fit? What do we do? What's going to bring us return on investment? What – what events should we be at? Where does the energy need to go? And then I think once we kind of figure out what that looks like, I think then, you know, then it's like, okay, now what? Do we need to grow it? Do we need to expand? We're talking about all sorts of things. Like, do we provide education? Like, how, you know, we're right. starting at the premiere show, so we'll be at the premiere show. Um, and I think it's just going to be kind of like us all, like, learning together as well. I, so. To me, I... Because, you know, uh, Dyson is, is like one of those brands now that they're constantly bringing new innovation or bringing, mm-hmm. they're creating excitement back into, into a, a tool uh, that seemed like it's been pretty much the same forever. I'm going to tell you, I, and I just had this conversation with Katie from Ulta. I was, uh, okay, you know, I heard her, right? I've been in this industry for 26 years and I'm like, how, like I knew the difference between a professional hair dryer and something that you would, you know, not consider a professional hair dryer, but like that I knew that it was better, you know? And then you just throughout the professional hair dry, drying, drying industry, you kind of like, you lean towards things cause either they're lightweight or you like the color, or, you know, you do. I had no clue how much technology, first of all, goes into creating a hair dryer. And then on top of it, I had no idea. I mean, obviously, you know, Dyson is like a household name. Right. But until I sat down with our engineer, I mean, I was, I was blown away. And I'm thinking, wow, I've been a hairstylist for 26 years, and I didn't even really realize the impact of, I mean, I know you can heat damage your hair, but I didn't realize, like, all of the things that, like, go into not damaging your hair with a tool. And 
at what degrees does the hair start getting damaged at and how do they prevent that and all this technology that goes into this little tiny little r it's insane to me and it's just like you know nobody really talks about it like it's so funny and I can't wait to like be I can't wait to start really like brainstorming with the team and like getting that message out there because I think that's when I mean people like respect Dyson just because of the name it's been around for so long but when you really really understand like why they create the tools that they do and it really is scientific about like keeping the hair in the best possible preservation they're not just saying that I mean it is literally scientifically proven and it, it, sitting down with the engineer i was just like wow this this is messaging that we need to get this needs to be standard in the industry for people right. to know this because that's kind of like then it's like the rolls royce no one's gonna after you drive a rolls royce you don't want to drive anything else you know i'll let you know when i drive a rolls royce. <laughs> <laughs> i got to drive in one in dubai not too long ago my client picked me up in her white rolls royce oh my god have you seen the weather in dubai uh -uh. All the flooding? No. You've got to check out the videos. They're crazy. They got two years of rain in 24 hours. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, like, I got a collar. They have, they have planes that are like, you think it's like an oceanscape, and then this plane comes by trying to try, trying to move down the runway. It's crazy. Yeah, up to the belly of the plane. You know how tall oh. the plane is. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Oh they God. are wild. They're I was literally going to text Alex today and be like, I have the next couple of weeks off if you need me to come get your <laughs> do your hair. Bring an umbrella okay. or a boat. No kidding. <laughs> so Good the private jet Lord. in the rolls, it will be a yacht. Well, I mean, they just did open up a really cool auction business, so they might have one. <laughs> or a few. <laughs> but that, to me, Dyson has to be one of the smartest companies out there because not only do they have the engineers, the technology behind the products, right? But they're bringing in you guys to to show you and prove to you the technology and and what they say, uh, you know it does it does mm -hmm. and it, you know and then bringing you guys in to share it with us. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean it, it's brilliant because a lot of times you know, uh, for, especially a consumer based product, it, it, they don't need to do that to us and you know you can use it or not, but mm -hmm. you know they they care enough. To, to you know put you guys together and to bring it to to our community which is pretty good yeah 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 and I think that like like I said as we develop you know together I mean we even we haven't had like an official well I guess we did it was at fashion week they they actually launched uh, the Dyson R at fashion week and um, the pro the team hadn't been announced yet but they brought in the team unfortunately I was in Mexico with Sonia. Um, negotiating with like the drug cartel and <laughs> <laughs> no um, she just bought a condo down there so yeah that's a whole nother story that's where the real if you rolls need to buy, <laughs> if you need to buy a condo in Mexico on the beach know that you don't you possibly don't own that property <laughs> so that was a whole thing but while I was doing that with Sonia in Mexico um, is when they launched this at Fashion Week and um, you know, getting, I was having FOMO, of course, my whole team was there. And, um, but the conversations that were had and like, how do we, how do we educate consumer or how do we educate the hairstylists world. about like this kind of, this kind of uh, heat and this kind of um, technology. It's going to be fun. It's different. It's totally different. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to, uh, to mess around with the dry. We, uh, you brought one in today with you and we, we turned it on and like, what was really impressive to me was that, <clears throat> there's an instant cool button. Yeah. You know, I've been using cool buttons a lot more over the last couple of years, and, like, it's instant. It's like you know, every other dryer that you go, some of them are as much as, like, 10 seconds mm -hmm. and then for, to cool, and then other ones are, you know, like, uh, even two or three seconds. And this was instant. literally instant. I, I was like, did I do that right? Like, it, it, it didn't feel I – I kept waiting for the lag, and there was no lag. It was just instantly cool, which – would save a ton of time, um, especially during your finishes. Yeah, and it's actually another little cool thing is see on each of these attachments, there's like a gold. Uh, yeah. That's a sensor. So it's a smart like a sensor. Like a heat sensor? Well, it's a smart sensor. So if I am like, if I'm blow drying, if I put this nozzle, this director, on the hair dryer and I'm, I have a certain heat set, and then say I'm going to switch to this because this is going to control flyaways. And, but I might go back to this concentrator. 
it saves the setting, the temperature that you used last when you used this particular attachment. So if you're switching them out and using multiple attachments on your client, at, you don't have to keep changing the heat settings on the dryer. It just knows to re-go back to those heat settings when you put that attachment back on. Whoa. So, and then obviously you can change the heat setting sure. when you need to, but it is nice to not have to go back and change the heat settings and the fan setting if you're just using it on the same person and you're going back and forth from, you know, maybe like you're using the the teeth to stretch the hair and then you want to finish it and you're doing it section by section it's just going to go back so if you're using a really high heat for this and then not as high heat to seal the hair um it, it knows that it knows stuff yeah does was it hard to get adjusted to the shape or to to the use of it or i mean i thought so when i first saw it i was like i mean first of all honestly before i even saw it and they said we're coming out with a professional dryer i was like womp womp <laughs> <laughs> and then when I saw it and then she like like and then picked it up and like the sh I was like wow this is crazy and I thought it was going to be a little like hard to be honest with you it's like an extension of your hand is the best way to describe it I love it like I'm obsessed with it and anyone that's used it and I've been traveling the last four weeks going from show to show and event and photo shoot. Every single person that's touched it is like, I need this. I need this. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. They, I, I love it. I'm like, I, I'm my own learning curve. Like I'm a gun user, mm -hmm. you know, like a gun shape. And then, you know, you, I, I do the flippies with the, with mm. the edge. So I, got, I think I'm gonna have to learn the new technique to kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. to kind of use it. Cause the air is almost under you at that point. Yeah. 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 You can't like roll the hair over the dry. Like if you, if you do that, like it's just getting used to it. Right. But, but what I will say is like when you're holding on to it, you still have full, like, cause I hold it, I end up holding it up on the top. Uh -huh. I still have full mobility in my pinky and like I can still pick up hair holding the dryer, right. which is like Let weird because you're so fat. You're cause you're so close to the head with this. Like you have both hands to be able to like utilize still. So and I mean, you don't, I find find that it, you don't find that it gets hot near your fingers. No, not at all. No. And that's the other thing too. I mean, when you, when you, you everyone wants to crank up their hair dryer, right? Because they think it's going to be so much faster. That's where you're going to burn hair, you know? So it, it, we do have like a whole like standard of like, you know, in between what temperatures are you, you know, pushing the hair too much. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I don't, there's no, I mean, with the attachments on there, the hair is going, or the air is going exactly where it's supposed to be going. So no, I don't have, I don't have an issue with that. That should be your education, by the way, as like, like use this setting for this type of hair yeah. or this for this type of hair. Cause I mean, I'm guilty. I mean, you know how you crank that flat iron up cause you're like, I, I want to, we got to get through this head, you know, a hundred but, um, percent, but yeah, like if after if, I was sat with their engineer, I have, did like, you feel I, guilty? I, well, I just felt like, I'm like, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, there is no heat protections right out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally now consciously, I curl my hair on, if I'm even using a curling iron that we don't even make, and I'm using somebody else's curling iron, I, it's on the lowest setting possible lowest, that will really? hold a curl. Got yeah, it. because anything with my fine hair, anything above, if, it's, if it will hold, it's fine. But if it is like... You know, I used to crank the same thing. I used to crank that hair, those things up, and I wanted like I wanted to go fast and forget it. Same. <laughs> like, can we get through this any quicker? You yeah. Know, or, or whatever, especially like you know. Yeah. In, in the middle of the day. No, it's made me so much more conscious. So that we need to. Uh, yeah. I think that needs to be the education, <laughs> it's right? So true. That's so crazy. It's a, you know what? I think we probably got that. <laughs> <laughs> in our lady book, it's probably not probably, lined up in our but book. I mean, how many things can you remember? Oh yeah, nothing. Right? <laughs> That's so crazy. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy that Dyson's stepping into this, and, and with that, I think if you, you know, if you're calling yourself Dyson Pro, I think there's a lot of responsibility with that, mm -hmm. and, and I'm hopeful that that Dyson um, uh, holds up to their end of the bargain as far as like. 
how good the products are, how, and I mean, the big thing with blow dryers and, you know, this is just a universal thing is how long does it last? Okay. So this is a thing. And this is another thing that I was like, oh, hello. I know that Dyson came out obviously with the supersonic. Um, and then everyone was like oh, obsessed with it as a consumer. And then hairstylists started using it. Right. And it wasn't a professional, it wasn't designed at first to be a professional tool. It was designed to be a consumer hair dryer, but professionals got a hold of it and they started using it. And it, it wasn't meant to be used all day, every day. So hairstylists were having problems with it, obviously. And they were burning out the engine, burning out the motors, and they weren't changing the filters out like they're supposed to. And, you know, no one reads instructions anymore. Cause it anymore, no one ever did. Because it is in the instructions, I will say. Um, so then they solved that problem by coming out with the Supersonic Pro, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was designed with the longer cord. Also should be literally, you should be rinsing that, uh, rinsing the filter every day. Like it's met, like if you follow the instructions, it will last. But still, right. people aren't. People don't follow the instructions, and that's why they burn out their motors on the Dyson. So when they created the R, this is obviously taking into consideration. Um, when you purchase the R, you actually get a second filter. Like oh, we're smart. trying to be like, hey, you can't not read. Like even <laughs> <laughs> even if you don't read the instructions, there's some. There's a reason why you have two filters. Um, no, so, and it, yes, it's designed, like I said, in very much in mind with the professional, but so is the Supersonic Pro. The mm -hmm. biggest thing I will say is it's the filter. And um, I think that having something that's super unique is going to obviously gain the attention again of the hairstylist and the professional. Um, and it's also a time for us now with this pro team, I guess it's more about the communication and the education. And, you know, because really both products are beautiful. Both products do do. Um, the, you said do do. Do do their, <laughs> do -do their <laughs> service or justice for the professional. But um, the education, you know, is, is really what the pro team is going to be able to kind of get out there now. So the new dryer, it's kind of like a purpley blue and an orange. It's a, a, are there are there going to be other like color schemes and stuff coming out? The answer is yes. Just you know, go with it. it I, you know, to be honest, I actually asked that question. Um, this is like the this is the combo. So apparently, this is maybe the original color of the first Dyson vacuum or something. Oh, we're going back. Yeah, and it's like the I think it's that's where they came up with this combo for the uh for the r um if i remember right and that's I'm, like the prototype co color <laughs> yeah 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 and yeah and i don't know how many how many are out there right now um but we I know are there'll be one less when yeah. you leave here <laughs> <laughs> i've daniel rolled down and actually tried to steal it <laughs> when we were where were we last um but yeah um so it's kind of the original color of the original Dyson vacuum. And, um, but as Dyson evolves, and we've seen it with the Airwrap, we've seen it with other things, we've seen it with the Supersonic, um, I'm sure. I'm sure that they'll come out with different colors. Is the Airwrap, um, is, that, is that consumer or pro? The Airwrap is consumer. I think it, will there be a pro version? You think? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I freaking love that thing. It it was a learning curve. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I was an idiot. I'm like, I I can't believe I'm working for this company and I cannot figure this damn tool out. <laughs> Did you have a tutorial? Did someone at the company have to show you? I watched tutorials on YouTube like crazy. I'm like, how do these girls do this? I just did. The hair was going all over the wrong direction. I couldn't get it to wrap around the curling iron. I was trying to use, like manually do it. You literally just let the tool do let, its let work. Let it do its job. Yeah, it, I couldn't. You do have to that. take the hairdresser out of it. Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. I try, mean, try to control it. And I no. I kept and I kept and yeah. I was like, damn, I have got to keep practicing <laughs> this. I'm gonna look like an idiot. <laughs> 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 I work for this company and I can't even use an air wrap. But now it's my favorite. Like, I don't, I actually don't use anything else on my hair. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So, I finally got it. I have clients who love the era. I've never tried it. I never played with it, but oh. I have clients who love it. They swear by it. I'm telling you, it is, 
actually, since I've been using it, I've gotten more compliments on my hair in the last two months than I've probably ever mm -hmm. gotten. And it's just, be, they're like, your hair's so fluffy. Your hair's got so much body in it. It's, it literally your makes rep. your hair, yes, it's air wrap. Wow. It's hands down. Well, here, I'm going to recommend, uh, <laughs> I'm going to recommend if you come up with a pro air wrap, you have to sign Jack Howard because we had a whole conversation with Jack yesterday about how he hates blow drying hair, but he loves blow dried hair. <laughs> so okay. I think he'd be the perfect, like he'd be the spot on like person to uh, to, to, to launch the pro version. No of the kidding, era. you just hold the stack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure Jack is very uh, comfortable with just holding the stick. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny, dude! Once again, I'm just I'm I'm really happy that um that Dyson's kind of moved into this space. But, yeah. um, but again, I mean, like, I, I'll, I'll put pressure on them to, like, let, let's do right by the hairdresser and, you know. Yeah. Um, but but they're, they're doing the right thing, so that's, yeah. that's cool. You know? I know. I'm excited. I'm so are you, will, will you, when the team was put together, did you have any say or did they go, these are like the, how many artists are there? Uh, there is myself and Pekila and then five. Five total? Mm, no, five. five like, seven. So seven yeah, of you guys? seven of us. So did you have a, a, a pick in like who you're picking out of that? Was this, Dyson said this is our team? Yeah, yeah. They actually put the team together. Um, many of them from the pro or from the design team actually of Ulta. Mm -hmm. And again, it really has to do with the relationships that Shallon had established from being being there and working with them already sure. um and it has nothing to do with like exclusively for alta or anything like that and you know i think as we grow it's probably you know as we grow and develop and work with other brands and collabs and it's going to probably not be exclusive i have no idea to right. be honest with you um but um, it was really like her going in and like supporting um, a lot of our trainings at Ulta. And then I think getting to know a couple key people that she had her eyes on that were like, oh, they're like, they're for this niche and they're for this niche. And yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. It also makes sense that if you're forming a team, you don't want any drama or jerks, right? Yeah. So like, by knowing True. them already and working with them already, you go, yeah. oh, I can, I, I can see a future here. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I mean, honestly, they're all so so good and like you know some of them are really savvy at social and some of them are really great at texture and some of them you know so yeah we've got a it's a really good diverse group and um just yeah good people that's awesome so uh you know if you're listening in definitely keep your eyes at premier orlando that's the official launch yeah 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 so that'll be the official launch at premier orlando we'll be there uh can't wait to see yeah. it and um you know you, you probably won't have that dryer going to orlando with you but uh <laughs> 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 that's awesome danielle thanks for hanging out with us yeah i love Before, every time uh any 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 secrets any any new things coming up yeah, anything yeah, yeah, yeah. that you're uh mm. Uh, Anything that I'm working on, um, besides uh, besides this, no, I'm just kind of grinding with my other companies, and I am doing. I am working a lot with uh, my own hair, Biz and Beyond. Uh, we're actually starting up some uh, scaling our actual services. So we're, gosh, what aren't we doing right now? We're we just came out with a really quick five step business course to. Um, kind of like maximize your exposure without just thinking Instagram. Um, and it's just like local listings and like, what can you do that don't, that does not cost you any more money that can give you so much more exposure um, for your business and your salon. So we just came out with that and we're going to be putting together like a mastermind coaching group coaching program. And then I'm just going to really kind of put together, we're in the, process of putting together like an elite group um where it's like more one-on-one -on -one personalized coaching um and then i've partnered with uh my partner business partner is a marketing gal and so we're gonna have like done for you marketing services website design um you name it like digital everything and we're working with ai a lot i feel like i'm like a geek now because <laughs> i if i'm not doing hair i am sitting you guys would be like, what? That's <laughs> I, my office has two big, huge Macs, you know, the desktop. And then I have my two laptops and my iPad and two phones. And I'm like, at what point did I turn into like <laughs> a person. computer right. geek? And I'm like, 
on mastermind calls like we have coaches too and i'm just learning like everything about ai and it's mind-blowing well you're not <laughs> learning everything about ai because there's everything <sighs> every second it changes uh, well that's a thing i mean right. my gosh every time i get on a call with them they're like okay and now we're gonna talk about claude i'm like who the hell's claude <laughs> <laughs> we're claude into the room <laughs> <laughs> That's what? no good. I mean, yeah. So, like, I'm like, I thought it was all about chat GPG. Now we have Claude. No, now we Claude. have Gemini. And I mean, uh, it sounds like, like you have a lot more time in a day than I have. Oh, <laughs> yes, how I work you do it all. all. I try. I know. Everyone's like, do you ever, like, relax? I'm like, I guess relaxing right. for me is, like, <laughs> learning. <laughs> right, fair. AI. So, yeah, learning <laughs> AI. But it is wild. It's it is crazy. really wild. It's, it's crazy to know that we're in a shift. It's crazy to know we're in a shift. And I know that it's so controversial right now. Um, uh, you know, and I, I won't lie. I think I was like one of those people. Like I was like kind of pissed about it. You know, at first I was like, oh, you know, what's it going to do for. I saw the greatest meme. And I think that this explains AI the best I've ever heard. It says, we're training AI um, wrong. We should be training it to do our laundry and fold our clothes so I have more time to write the book. <laughs> right. Have more time <laughs> to be creative. Yeah. Have more time to draw. And I go like, that's kind of it, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like, like I understand that that's, you know, people are worried about taking over the creative with AI. Yeah. And you know what, though? The more I play with it and the more I'm learning and the more I'm utilizing it, the more I'm like, okay, this is actually cool. Cool. Like, this is cool. Like, this, this, this is it used correctly. This is really, really um, can make some major advancements in a lot of the way we operate day, in, day in and think, day out. I think it's changing the genius. And mm. here's what I mean by that is that, like, you know, um, weak example, but even like when there's a lot of slack that TikTok creators get. You know, you hear from the regular world about like mm. they don't have any talent or they're not doing this and that. And my argument is that it's the opposite of that. Their creative is different. Mm -hmm. They're you know like like you might not be the best hairdresser in the world, but you're getting attention. And some people go like, well, what? But but their genius is bringing attention to themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and so that so in AI, it's the same way. That the what's going to be creative isn't necessarily a brush stroke, but it's how you prompt something so you get the perfect image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the genius. Yeah, yeah. So not everybody can do that. No, no. And that's what I'm learning a lot about right now is like the prompting. And um, we're actually my business partner and I are going to create a course um, for hairstylists to how to use AI to help with their salon, uh, just like day-to-day -day operations, um, how to use it to help the market, how to use it to make their life easier and like condense their social media and maximize like their content, all that stuff. So, I mean, there's so many programs out there. Like I'm learning things every day that I'm just blown away by. I just had my voice cloned. Oh, that's crazy, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It was wild. I wanted to see if it worked. I was like- And how'd it work? Well, it's pretty on. Can I you sing like the national anthem now with your voice? <laughs> hey, I I haven't gotten like I haven't plugged it into the programming yet to like see to make the videos and stuff. But we do have it back from them. It's Eleven Labs that does it, mm -hmm. and um, my business partner was like, "I know you because I spend so much time with you." And she's like, and she goes, and your voice does change. She's like, you're, you have a professional voice. You have, you know, your stage voice. You have your wine drinking voice. Do, right? So I'm like, yes. So she's like, she goes, I don't think that anyone would, I don't think anyone would catch on that that's not your, not, not you. That's your natural voice. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. It's like, if I hear my wife on the phone, I know who she's talking about, about the voice that's, She's yeah, presenting with, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. I was yeah, going to say 100%. put on, but then, I, but it's not because I don't think it's fake. It no. just it's how we present ourselves to different people. Yeah, it's your mindset. Yeah, yeah, it's totally your mindset. Because some people be like, "God, you're so you sounded so professional on that call." I'm like, 
Yeah, otherwise I sound like I'm from California. <laughs> you should have seen her at the bar when she was pitching the new Dyson dryer to us. She was not the professional. No, I was at like all. the <laughs> alley yeah, girl. Oh my god! <laughs> That's hilarious. Danielle, how can people find you, and how can they find Dyson Pro? Um, they can find me online at uh, my website is now hairbizandbeyond.com, as well as Instagram. We have a hairbizandbeyond. Uh, page. We also have Danielle. I still have Danielle Kiesling, which is my main professional page. And then I actually have a lifestyle page, which is another million miles. So that's actually consumer focused. Well, I, need, I need to follow that one. I don't follow that yeah. one. Yeah, that one's fun. That one's where I cold plunge and talk about all the product reviews. Uh -huh. and uh -huh. yeah, Olivia, Olivia did a that a few years more. ago. Olivia Small uh, J uh, Thompson. She uh, she started a lifestyle page too, and that, it, it's also much more fun to follow than her than it's her other. It's so page. funny because I have I <laughs> I think that people like yeah I think it's more it's it's got a lot less uh, followers, but it's got a lot more engagement. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, are people just nosy or <laughs> yes? <laughs> but like yeah, I mean, because it's it's just it's so much more raw. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's so cool. Danielle, thank you for once again for making time for us and, and hanging out. And, and um, you're definitely a person that we seek whenever we can be in the uh, in the same room together. So uh, th thank you for the friendship and just yeah. all, the, all the conversations we have when we don't have a mic in, in our face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I enjoy talking to you guys both all uh, the time. Love. love you, Danielle. <laughs> Miss Danielle Keesling, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.